Okay, so what this uh, entire exercise was really leading up to was the graphical representation of electric flux because that's the piece that you need in order to make an intuitive sense of Gauss's law. Gauss's law is stated in terms of electric flux. So uh, if you don't have a good grasp on what electric flux is, one, it's uh, hard to understand Gauss's law. And two, uh, I think at the end of this activity, we can actually see the intuitive conceptual reason that Gauss's law exists. I mean, it's, I wouldn't call this a derivation of Gauss's law because that is impossible. Gauss's law is the fundamental law. You don't, um, you derive other things from Gauss's law. You don't derive Gauss's law. So you guess at it. Um, so, uh, sorry, is that internet connection stable? I hope I'm still coming through. Or, you know, if my, yeah. Anyway, so um, let me read it through here, see how many of these I want to do. Um, let's see here. I, I think I should uh, at least uh, start by drawing some area in a electric field representation. So let me do that here. I'm gonna copy over this side of you and use that to do my representation. Okay, so what this is a side view of infinite plane. And I want to consider an, an area for calculating flux out of. The, the simplest, easiest area of a sort is area that's, a, um, that's a perpendicular to the field. So I can imagine um, a rectangular area of area A that lies here. Um, and I'm drawing the side view again. So, um, you know, it's like you are looking edge on of an area. If you tilt it a little bit, then it'll it'll, um, you know, it'll start to have some uh, representation in 2D dimension. So we're not gonna do that, but imagine some area there. And, uh, you know, sketch this picture and calculate the electric flux. Well, that's pretty simple. For um, infinite charge the plane like this, I know that my electric field here is uniform. It's one constant value. So, um, so as I'm imagining calculating this quantity, E dot dA over this area, I don't have to worry about E changing because it's not. And by the way, if E changed, you don't want to set up the arrangement so that it doesn't change over the integral. But anyways, it's already not changing, so I leave it. Um, and the, so the thing I have to handle is the dot product here. And if you watch the lecture videos, I think you will see me note that the, the direction of an area vector is defined by looking at what is the normal vector for the plane. So, and um, there's something about the sense of direction for the normal vector. Um, here, I just chose that direction in a way that I know will make the dot product come out positive. Um, once you have a closed surface, which is what you're dealing with in Gauss's law, you don't quite have a freedom to pick what direction. Um, the convention we have there is that outward direction is by, by convention defined to be positive. So, so okay, here um, I just argue that electric field should be constant, not changing. So when I imagine integrating this over the area, I'm simply going to get that the flux here is equal to electric field, the constant value, uh, that product with the area. And here they happen to be in the same direction, zero degree difference between them. So the flux, which is a scalar quantity, is just uh, electric field times area. That's that's it, <laughs> that's the flux. I think the next question was a, a bit more substantial. Let me take a look. And it says, yeah, and, and you know, I said, let's just start with an easy case. It was easy. <laughs> let's modify the case by rotating the square and uh, define the coordinate axis, do I want? Uh, I don't think I have to define coordinate axis, so I want. So I, I, we can look at this picture here and see how that flux would change. Well, let's uh, um, do some of that 
mathematical work here. Um, can I rotate drawings? I don't think I can actually rotate the drawings. Let me see. Um, does it really not let me rotate? Oh, wait, wait, does it rotate? Okay, rotate. Um, okay, rotate right 45 degrees. Okay, so that's um, what you can imagine doing. And um, you can see here that, you know, this is the direction of the electric field. Now E dot dA becomes more interesting. So the more general expression for that dot product there is this. It's equal to the magnitude of the electric field times the magnitude of the area, or just the area, <laughs> magnitude of the area vector. And we have to handle the dot product. So that, that product will give us the factor of cosine of the angle between these two vectors or for purposes of um, simplicity, I can just say cosine of um, theta. That's, the, that's gonna be the angle between the two. So, um, so yeah, I guess if I plug in what cosine theta is, then I would get this. Uh, electric field times area times uh, cosine of 45 degrees. That sounds like one over root two. So, so that's the electric flux. That's it. <laughs> so what you see with the, the dot product definition of electric flux is that um, this dot product contains some information about the relative directions of the quantities that um, when you have electric field pointed in certain way, when the area have, was a perpendicular to the electric field, it, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> when the surface is perpendicular to the electric field, then it captures the most uh, flux and it's captured this way because of the way we define the, the area as a vector. When the surface is perpendicular, that means the theta is actually zero because the normal vectors parallel to the other vector that's perpendicular. So cosine of theta is one, you get the most maximum uh, possible value out of the dot product. Anything else, when you rotate the area relative to that orientation, then, um, then, then you get flux that's decreasing from there. Uh, and that's represented here, that's captured here. When theta is anything other than zero degrees, you get, um, you get less, uh, less value and you, I got this one over root two, not one. And I think this is actually the next question in the, the lab, um, which is, let's see, where is it? Yeah, would it be possible to arrange it so that the electric flux through the square is zero? Yeah, I think you can imagine that. Um, two different ways to get at it. You can, um, you can orient it in a way so that, um, one way I think that's easier to get at is the mathematical way, which is you look at this expression and you realize, aha, if a theta is equal to 90 degrees, then, uh, then cosine of 90 degrees is gonna be zero. So you'll have zero flux. And that corresponds to, oh, let me do this rotating thing again. Let's see here. Let me rotate it additional 45 degrees. Yeah. So with the area oriented that way, uh, you'll get zero flux based on the math here. And this is the thing I wanted to get at. This is the this is the reason I wanted to talk about the electric field lines in this context and have you be in the mindset of looking at. You can see that all these field lines that were going through the area before are now gonna be missing the area. Electric fields are parallel to the plane, so they don't go through the plane. So the flow of electric field through the area is zero. That's, that's really why we call this quantity uh, flux, because the physical intuition that makes most sense for this quantity in the way it's mathematically defined is some kind of a flow analogy. We do all the caution that with electric fields, nothing is actually flowing. It's a mathematical property of space. Nothing is actually moving. Um, but the, the imagery that's most uh, useful is a one of a flow. So with the area oriented this way, no fields are flowing through the area. So the flux is zero. And that, uh, 
that statement is backed up with the mathematical definition of electric flux.